Hello, welcome to the 11th London Short Film Festival. My name's Philip Ilson, Festival Director. Thanks for coming out and supporting Short Film and supporting the festival. Uh, we're really pleased to be presenting Tales of Us tonight, which is in conjunction with I and Dora. Uh, Tales of Us is a film that's directed by Lisa Gunning, and uh, Lisa will be on stage with Gemma uh, from I and Dora uh, afterwards for a Q&A, and the films were produced uh, for Gold Frap for a series of songs. Um, by Goldfrap. I'll uh, let you uh, relax and enjoy Tales of Us. Okay, thanks. So, Lisa, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, I just wanted to start at the beginning, I guess. You know, um, how did you and Alison decide to um, bring this film together? Well, we were um, sitting in a room with uh, the record company and the lovely manager, Peter, who's sitting over there. Um, and we were, we were just sort of discussing how to make something visual for, for just one of the songs. And um, for Stranger, because I'd had this idea on an, on an aeroplane when I was flying to, to some test screening that I'd been... I was editing a movie called Seven Psychopaths. So I had kind of psychopaths on in my head and Alison had given me um, a little demo of Stranger so I was thinking about psychopaths and listening to Stranger and suddenly I thought I'll just write this crazy idea down and see what comes of it and um, so I put it to the amazing record company that is uh, Mute and and everyone sort of loved the idea and so we sat in this room talking about that and then that became two videos or short stories or short films became three became four became five and at the end of this meeting I was nearly having a heart attack because obviously the, the financial the budget doesn't usually extend to anything like that so obviously we had to pull together a huge amount of favors and people just put so much love into this it's just ridiculous and um, and so we 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 just endeavoured to do something that we thought would be probably impossible, but um, gradually everyone just started to rally around us, and 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 we we managed to we managed to make them. So um, specifically with the very amazing help of Steph Zari, who's over there, brilliant Steph, put your hand up. She's the most amazing producer in the world that managed to turn water into wine, and um, Brian's. <laughs> and she's drinking a lot of wine now, right now. And um, Brian Strange sitting next to her, who's an amazing DOP, who made everything look so beautiful. So thanks to those two. Um. Um, one of the reasons why um, I was particularly interested in it was uh, coming from the I Am Dora perspective of um, the way that it allows you to explore different images of women and how the the project as a whole allows you to do that. So could you tell me a bit about, you know, the way that Alison put the album together and how that informed the way that you presented the characters that we see along, you know, gender identity, but also just as characters in their own right? Yeah, well, I was totally blessed, obviously, to have this initial material to work with, which was the most amazing collection of songs, which um, Alison and Will um, Goldfrapp, uh, Alison particularly, is... Um, obsessed with story, stories and storytelling, as am I. Um, and she was very much inspired by a, a numerous books and movies. And um, her, you know, she's, she does a lot of research and uh, fills her mind with characters and stories. And 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 out come these, you know, these amazing stories that are, are the songs. And so I started with, you know, a massive head start there. I had these these beautiful um, characters already made. Um, and then we took those characters and, and transmitted them into kind of the film language. So obviously they, the, there were quite a few changes, and but they were inspired by something very, you know, there was a very, um, you know, uh, full, full rounded, um, numerous female characters, because Alice was very interested in, in sexuality and, uh, you know, the, what it is to be a woman and, um, and identity and the idea of, you know, the psychology of women and the psychology of being human, really. And so all of that we try to explore and reflect in, in, the, in the films. So, yeah. I think it's interesting that... Um, I think I've read somewhere that there was um, 
an incompleteness in some of the music videos that perhaps Alison had taken part in before that maybe she didn't like them so much um, as a medium. Um, did this allow you to do something a bit more interesting with the medium of the music video in terms of those issues? Well, I mean, I've never really... I mean, I've made a couple of music videos before, um, but never really... Had, uh, I, I wasn't that interested in doing it unless we had very um, concrete story telling in place you know because I don't see the point in making something visual unless it has a story even if it seems abstract or I don't know even if it even if you don't fully understand it I feel like it has to have a strong logic and so um, yeah that that's what we that's what I tried to do that's what I tried to bring to each each film and in a way that sort of changed hopefully changed the form of music video into something a little bit more um, of, so it has a beginning, a middle and an end and a, st a proper story. So they're kind of some way between music video and short film. So, yeah, we attempted to do that. Yeah, kind of it's very interesting that the project as a whole feels quite novelistic. So there's like all these chapters and you've got these, you know, a lot of story behind them, as you said, with if you wanted to go looking for them, the actual material behind them, it's quite like literature in that sense. Yes, literature. And then, um, I mean, for instance, L Laurel... Um, which I think, in terms of female character, I was I was very it, the story of Laurel. I'll tell you because it was um, Laurel is the one with the pole dancing lady, the amazing pole dancing lady called Alyssa. Who um, the story of that is that we were in I was in Los Angeles doing this psychopath thing, and um, was kind of banging my head against the wall every night, just you know after a long day in the cutting room. And uh, the way I would normally relax would be to go to this uh, strip club called Jumbos. <laughs> So you know, I'd be, I'd sort of be there every night drinking a whiskey, and um, Alison came to uh, visit me in in Los Angeles for Christmas, and I said, "You got to come to this place; it's fantastic." So she had jet lag; I was probably drunk on whiskey, and we sat there in this tiny place um, where Courtney Love used to apparently used to be a dancer. It's very kind; of, it's not it's not seedy; it's kind of grungy in a good way, and um, and this amazing woman suddenly suddenly the sound of uh, the smiths came on how soon is now which is an epic song as you know and uh, this amazing kind of i don't know how to describe it she wasn't she wasn't beautiful conventionally um, but she was a kind of lynchian powerful incredible she had this presence that was just epic and she kind of did this dance in front of us we both totally bowled away and i, I couldn't believe it and um Anyway, we left, and two years, it was two years later, nearly, um, we were, I was thinking, I had to go back to Los Angeles, and I was like, okay, maybe I can just film, find this woman, and we can make a little story about who she is. I want to actually know who this woman is. And um, I always wanted to um, take a, a stripper or somebody who does a lot of work with their body, a female, and find out, you know, disobjectify her and find out who she is and, and try and get inside her mind and her everyday life in a way. So I, I went on a quest to find her and it was very difficult to find her. But eventually, I, having been to this place over and over again, <laughs> <laughs> um, finally I got uh, the doorman said, I, I found a little picture of her on the wall and I said, who's that? And he goes, oh, that's Tiger. And I said, well, do you have her number? And so he said, yeah. And by the way, because you're a pervert, I'll give it to you. And um, so, <laughs> so um, I called her up. And uh, apparently she was a massive golf rap fan and had been dancing to Strict Machine the night before somewhere else. <laughs> and um, and she, she turns out she's got a PhD in pale paleontology, so oh, in dinosaurs. Fun. So she's like the most brainy woman in the entire universe, and she she's in our films. So that was, and you know, it's just uh, that's a, a practical story of how one of them came about. But obviously, the the song Laurel was inspired by Dorothy B. Hughes' um, novel In a Lonely Place, and uh, that's about a starlet in the fifties. And um, so there's this amazing osmosis that kind of happened with Alison's reading turning into a song, turning into a strip club experience, um, turning into a, a film. So it's quite an interesting pathways to these things. Um, speaking of osmosis, I just was really interested in, um, you know, kind of the way that you've worked with Alison on these films and how Alison is in some of them um, and how that worked. So when you were directing films which Alison 
was in. Um, did you see her as a as an artist, a musical artist, or did you see her as a character that she was playing, or did you just see her as Alison that you know? Um, and equally, when you were working on films where Alison wasn't such a key character, was her input different to when she was really in front of the camera for a lot of it? I mean, she's she's the most amazing collaborator. So uh, at all times, every frame of this is a, a collaboration with her and um, and our team. And um, she she's just uh, I think every single film because she's so you know I mean we were making these together you know in our house with our bare hands just you know everyone's all our friends' hands are involved in it. Um, and so Alison's. Um, input it was just um, consistent throughout every single film whether she's in it or not in fact didn't make a difference um, uh, she was just a very very um, brilliant brilliant in the cutting room brilliant as a storyteller and um, so whether she's in it or not doesn't doesn't really make any difference to her input um, and in fact she prefers the ones she's not in you know she's the very uh, modest person and doesn't really like to really see herself so you know she was much more interested in the ones she wasn't in than the ones she was and um yeah we just we had yeah it was just a, a very very you know level collaboration and in terms of how i felt about her when she was actually in any of the, how i directed her she she was a, like an actress a very very professional uh, you know, the most professional actress you could ever hope for because she's got this sense of... Well, she's had a lot of experience with making videos and being a performer, so she's probably more the most experienced actress. Uh, you know, the, she's she's done 15 years of being in front of cameras, and, and so she's, she's very, very natural. Um, and so I was really lucky, you know. So whatever, you know, she doesn't really have bad angles or anything. She's, she's so... And she's very believable. Um, and... Yeah, so she's a she's a true professional. <laughs> I want to open it out to the audience if you guys have questions for Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Um, I noticed the films are shot predominantly in obviously black and white. It seems to be a very low contrast black and white, with flashes of going into colour, particularly in um, Annabelle, where um, when we've uh, watched this before. Um, I've certainly interpreted that when it goes into colour in Annabelle, it seems to reflect the sexual awakening of the male character. Is that, um, was yes, that a deliberate thing? that was intentional. It was just, we, I tried to use anything at, at our disposal to, to, sh to sort of bring some kind of brightness towards the end because that's where it, you know, so we used colour to do that. Yeah, and, and the low contrast, I, I mean, is it, Am I right in saying that the black and white um, sections, which is, the prom uh, which is the predominant parts of the films, do seem to be very, I said, I can only put it down as like low contrast. It's, yeah. it, it's a very sort of, um, 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 just lacking in contrast, really, is what I can think of. Well, we uh, did, yeah, I mean, it's, it's because, actually, I tried loads of different things, and the, the low contrast was m the most dreamy, yeah. kind of. The minute you take colour out of something, suddenly it's not our real life, because we see everything in colour, so that... Because it, when it goes to colour, it's still very uh, muted colour. It's, it's still muted, yeah. yeah, it's still the same sort it of It seems to match dreaminess. the black and white, as in, as in not being very very deep in, yeah. its, in its black. But when, its when you've got loads of saturation in it, yeah. it, it makes it more real, and I didn't really want it to look too real. I wanted it to be a bit more in the imagination, Dreaming, so yeah. that's why. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, first off, uh, well done on such a beautiful piece of art. Uh, mm, amazing, uh, especially uh, the photography incredible uh, my question is uh, lovely locations whereabouts was it and come and all go for a picnic <laughs> <laughs> it was all over the place it was los angeles um uh tottenham house in near marlborough which was a crazy place um, <laughs> um where all the insides basically the outside was coming inside it's, uh, sorry it's in marlborough in los angeles no that? marlborough is in wiltshire <laughs> Oh, okay. So Wiltshire, and then Nottingham. That was the uh, the modernist house, beautiful modernist house, was in Nottingham. We shot a lot in Hackney. Um, yeah. Yay! And how, Hackney. How, how about that forest? Um, <laughs> where where was that forest? The forest was Steph. Where was that forest? Essex. Yeah, we were in Essex. Okay, glamorous. In the middle of nowhere, in a, with a bunker, a nuclear bunker, and then Camber Sands. Yeah. Thank you very much. Ah. Uh, <laughs> It's either Norfolk or Canberra Sands, yeah. isn't it? <laughs>
Hi, Lisa. Hello, Jet. Hello. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, editing, directing, and writing um, all of those, and that's your first time directing. Yes. Um, what for you uh, was um, in the making of all of those five films? What was the most enjoyable or interesting? What did you find um, being, instead of uh, the editor, um, as a director, did you, did you then go away and edit and think, oh, I should have got that shot, why didn't I you know, do this or that? I mean, uh, what, was a, what was a sort of different angle for you for it? Well, the, the best thing about that I found was the fact that, because normally being an editor, I'm, I'm quite solitary in, in my room and with the film, so I'm kind of, I don't usually have so much interaction with so many amazing people as I did on this project. So there was just, I couldn't believe what human beings were capable of. I mean, it was just like everyone had these incredibly specialized jobs that they did so brilliantly and um, communicating with them and, and, you know, just this sort of seeing this teamwork was extraordinary. I mean, it was just sort of life-affirming for me, actually. So that was an amazing experience. And in terms of not getting shots uh, that I wish I had, there was loads of them. But um, I spent my life in the cutting room digging everyone else out of the crap. And so I, this time, I dug myself out of it sometimes. I mean, you probably thought I didn't, but I, it was quite fun to do it for myself as opposed to um, doing it, I guess, for other people. Although I love collaborating with other directors and, and stuff. It was just... It was just, it was, it was a really kind of, um, it was more fun, I guess, because I had more um, vested, of a vested. You know, I understood what the material was so much more than normal because I'd, I'd conceptualized it and, you know, I'd made it from the start. And I also, it was like um, instead of watching rushes that are finite, I was able to w look through the monitor and and change something and say, actually, next time, can we do that? And it was like magic. It was brilliant. I can't wait to do it again if someone will let me. <laughs> Great, thanks. <laughs> Did the experience sort of change your practice as an editor as well? Having Yes, yes, because it made me nicer to people. <laughs> I was like, I, th I had to, you know, I think it was a great exercise um, uh, to, to just to, to really, you have to be so, respectful of people that have just gone and thrown themselves it's like pulling your pants down in front of everybody and you know um I, I i until you've done it yourself you can't understand how vulnerable making it is and wonderful at the same time as well and you get loads of credit for things you didn't do and and stuff like that which i knew already about directors but <laughs> but <laughs> but um but i but it, it definitely um you know, I, I'm I'm nicer and a little bit more empathetic to to <laughs> people that have gone out and shot something. Yes. Um, hi, I'm just interested. Obviously, obviously um, we 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 kind of getting to know what Alison was reading and 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 thinking about when she wrote the album. But what are your visual influences when you were making the films? What were your kind of visual cues? Well, I'm a massive David Lynch fan, so. Um, especially in the axe murdery one that's that was just like i've been dying for years to to make something dark and kind of of that kind of visual palette um i i mean bergman films make me i'm so i persona is one of my favorite films ever so you know i'm literally just dying to do something like that too um and alison shares all of those same uh influences as well so really it's like it was it's just fantastic to work with someone who's got a very similar aesthetic or aesthetic um you know ideas and and loves as as you um yeah uh Berg, i mean I, there was just so many there's so many different kind of influences in there um but i'd say the main ones of lynch and bergman are just this sort of idea of things not quite being quite right and trying to trying to achieve reality but not quite as we know it kind of stuff Ah uh, yes, I know. Yeah. I, I understand that a lot of the songs are based on are based on uh, novels and perhaps films or whatever. But uh, Drew looks to me to be autobiographical. Is that would that be fair to say? I wish it was. That would be great. Maybe in my youth. Not not yours. No. Oh, oh right. Uh, <laughs> Alison's autobiographical. Well, I don't know. You might have to ask her. Um, maybe she hasn't. I don't I, know. She hasn't told it, me about. Um, I have to say that it looks. <laughs> <laughs> looks that way to me. Yes. Well, she did seem to it wear that character extremely well, it didn't she? It looks to me to relate. 
<laughs> it looks to me to relate to an earlier song she did called Lovely Head. Ah, right. It, what, you mean the visuals? The, the, the actual co- the what, lyrics, the content, the content of the lyrics. The, the content of the lyrics. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. She didn't discuss that with me. I don't yeah. think so. I don't think okay. so. But um, as far as the, the the visual side of things go, that yeah. wasn't a reference at all. But I think, okay. I mean, I think, you know, she's tells... I, I think she's the same person that wrote that lovely head. So she probably, you know, it's there are probably... The DNA of that is in everything she does. So I, yeah, <laughs> okay. But um, I can't. I, she would have a much more eloquent answer than this. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Can I go back to the question before, where you were talking about um, uh, your influences and how things being not quite right? So um, with the Lynchian influences, um, can you talk a bit about how you and you know your DOP like worked together to? to get that you've talked a little bit about the black and white and the you know the the palette that you used but to get that haunted feeling that really felt like your own and not derivative oh well, that's nice thank you um uh we just we we kind of just i mean i what i'm amazed about as well is this this the the one that going back to what jet was asking about you know what have i learned having not been in the cutting room was that that things just do have a way of finding themselves there and then you know well you're you you there's so many parameters and it's like a being on a shoot is like a damage limitation exercise i mean there's so much going wrong and so well not but steph basically made everything go right but it's it, there's so much there's so many um uh it's problems you have to solve in every, any given moment that you're you're constantly making decisions of yes okay let's do that or yes cut that don't let's not do that and you know there's there's things you're sort of forced into that sometimes sometimes are amazing happy accidents and sometimes you design things but i'm amazed at the proportion of happy accidents there are um so you know i can't take credit for all of those but I, we just there was a very amazing atmosphere on the set um, Brian is a brilliant collaborator and we we just all, everybody sort of kind of worked together in a sort of, I don't know, we, I was just very open to ideas and I think, I mean, I, I was really lucky to have learnt an awful lot from Anthony Mingella who I worked with um, early on in my career and he, he taught me that that is everything, to be open and to be able to have enough vision to say, okay, well, I do like that, I don't like that, but to take everybody's point of view and give it a chance or give every situation a chance and then choose it. And so I don't know if I'm answering your question, but um, that the process was an open collaborat- collaborative process. But ultimately, I'm obsessed with story. And I, as, as an editor, I've, I've got a very, I had a very, very clear idea of what we wanted. We storyboard, I storyboarded everything out. So we got the shots that I thought we needed and then some. And the, and the and then some shots are sometimes the best shots because they're unplanned and um, happen just because the gods allow it. So just before we were we were here, we had um, Ghost Box Records sort of retrospective, and um, we we're talking a little bit about kind of analog way uh, ways of seeing and how that allows you to explore something a bit more haunted or, you know, it allows you to give a depth to something. And I guess that's kind of, it stayed in my mind when I was watching this again, was that you've chosen quite, I guess, analog ways of telling a story and visuals. Um, And it's given you another, well, for me, it gave me another layer to understand something. Was that something that was in your mind that you wanted to make it feel nostalgic in some way? Yeah, I mean, I think the songs have... So what's going in through your ears has got that already. Mm. And so this is a reflection... that the Everything we t- filmed was a reflection of that. But yes, and I, because I'm a, um you know, editor by trade, a cinema editor by trade, I, I think about things in terms of structure and I think about things... Yeah, storytelling... It, it it's quite basic storytelling and I'm not into um, things being... Um, over complicated or but tricksy or stuff to, um, embellished for, for no logical reason. So I'm apl- applying constantly and probably not always rightly um, a sort of fa- a, f- a fierce logic to everything. It's, even though it doesn't seem like some things make sense, to me they do. So I'm hoping that some, in some part, portal of everybody's brain, there's a reason why one cut happens 
And one shot happens after the next and the next. But the sum total is that, yeah, I did try and make it feel um, like, a, like a dream. I love dreamy, dreamy things. And that's a reflection also of what was going on in the music. Hello there. Um, mm. Actually, we're talking about the different layers, you definitely added one layer to, to my understanding of Stranger, which is one of my favorite songs. Uh, I always thought of it like being very like, like beautiful, an encounter that never happened, and the love that kind of was taken by the crowd, and you know the other person just goes away and you never see them again. This, I almost jumped in my seat when I saw <laughs> you know, her strangling the other. I was like, was it intentional to kind of leave that sinister um, feeling to that song because to me it's never going to be the same. I mean, I'm going to definitely <laughs> I've see the different la layers now, which is brilliant. I mean, I, I still like the song. I kind of feel it deeper now. But um, uh, was your intention to leave people with any feelings? Well, I think Alison and I both have a shared love of um, taking something that shouldn't go with something else, like you know, putting things together which just feel wrong. And somehow that's fascinating. So um, the idea of this sort of almost these two women kind of uh, making love and that music, it's just too perfect. And, and we just, I mean, I, could, I can't handle that. Sometimes I just want, I, something bad has to happen. I mean, I, it's like real life. I was um, actually enjoying it. I was like, oh, how lovely. Yeah. And then you kind of, you took it away. So I, yeah, I guess, I mean, personally, I just didn't feel that was enough. It's just not enough, and it would have been a different... It, it, it just had to go somewhere um, twisted. It definitely and, did, yeah. And a lot of <laughs> the golf, a lot of Alison's music and, you know, um, things she's inspired by as well um, end up that way. And, and so it just seemed... And also the psych, psychopath thing was going on in my head, and it, it just seemed logical. I quite like the idea of playing things against the opposite of what they are. So also when I'm editing something, some, a lot of the time I, if I'm scoring... A scene which is um, supposed to be one thing, putting completely the opposite kind of music on it can be an amazing exercise. You can find yourself with something much more. So, in a small way, that's kind of what we try to do. Perfectly, in that one. there oh, has good. been more. Definitely, I hope it hasn't ruined it for you. Nightmares. Hi, how Hi. did you come up with the selection of the songs? And is there a songs from Tales of Us that you wish you had shot and you didn't? Yes. Oh my God. I, I, it'd be my dream to do all of them, um, because actually uh, some of them hadn't been written yet when we dis when you know we decided to make some of the films. So Clay was still in a in in process, and that is a story about two um, soldiers in the war who were in love, and one of them tragically gets killed before they have time to come back at the end of the war. And, be together and it's a, based on a letters of note um uh this brilliant website everyone should know about with, which um showcases letters of note um every so often they come on them they come into your inbox and they're just the most amazing um letters from people throughout the ages um and this one was from one soldier to the other and alison you know, wrote Clay as a result of that, and I just thought that that would make a very brilliant sort of uh, short film. I'd love to do that one. Hopefully, at some point we will. But um, and Alvar as well would be an amazing one to do. Thank you. Hopefully, one day we can do some more. <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask you what your, you know, what you'd like to do with the film now, what you are going to do with the film now, um, in the future. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, it's exciting, good stuff. We've got um, on Monday there'll be an announcement, uh, w which is, goes into more detail. But on um, later on this year, there's going to be uh, not not that far into this year, there's going to be a um, cinema event where these films get shown to and streamed live to over 300 cinemas around the world. And um, Alison will be doing a live performance um, which, will ref which will follow on from the film, so hopefully live in the same kind of world. Um, and that will be, yeah, so that'll be a, a sort of, I don't know how long that is, but that's going to be, you know, a proper feature length thing, which will be exciting. And so people in, you know, Sydney will be able to see. And uh, so lots of people everywhere, hopefully, will go and see that. And also I'm trying to develop uh, Annabelle, the song, the, the, um, the little film we made for that, which is based on a brilliant novel by Kathleen Winter, who's now become a friend and who's an amazing collaborator too. And she's, um, yeah, so we're trying to make a feature of that. So and that's in development right now. So hopefully some point that will happen. Sounds 
Sounds really exciting. Um, thank you so much, Lisa. You're so welcome. Um, thank you. We'll Thanks. be in the bar now. There's some music going on, so please join us. And thank you guys for staying. Thank you.